to get more directors on the show. I thought, that's why I thought it was cool that we had someone like Pamela Adlon on the show. Today, we have the lovely Karina Evans on the show. She directed the first episode of Pea Valley, new series coming out on Stars. I mean, you've you've seen a lot of her work out there behind the camera. You've seen her in front of the camera as well. We'll talk about all of that today. Uh, Karina, thank you for joining. Back a little bit when I first read um, Pea Valley, I felt a whole visceral reaction throughout my body where I um, felt empowered and felt liberated through Vittori's writing, the showrunner and creator mm -hmm. and writer, um, and hadn't seen this particular group of women represented in the way that um, she wrote them. And so I just felt like I had to be a part of it and, and you know, pitched on it. And in my very, very first conversation with Vittori, she had said the visual style for Pea Valley is uh, what she coined um, Delta Noir, which mm. which is basically um, uh, adapting traditional noir principles, but putting a twerk on it <laughs> is what she said. <laughs> is literally what she said in our first conversation. And so um, I somehow knew what that meant. And uh, uh, we spoke a lot, and I really just wanted to get into her into her mind and into her head um, to see what she saw and to envision what she envisioned. And um, so the process of understanding this style was, was very different than, you know, what I had done prior to that moment. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it was, it was through a real collaboration. And, and from there I started to build out a, a lookbook um, that was, uh, uh, could serve as a, uh, visual bible of you know references and 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 rules to be broken or followed um mm -hmm. through conversation with her okay. were, were you were you cool with like did you know her before did you have a relationship or were you familiar with her work prior to working of on course, this familiar with her work and mm -hmm. i mean she's a god <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. um but but was it hadn't met her prior prior mm -hmm. to reading the pilot and um she's she's by God, I mean, she's a visionary, you know, and so in one single conversation with her, I had already grown and learned from her. And so it was just a partnership I was really interested in. Right. Well, you mentioned this was the first time you worked in TV. Were you actively looking for projects? Did you were you were trying to get some 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 TV swag going? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, I mean, I started in music videos and, and love the art of, of music videos, but the end goal for me was always film and TV. Um, mm -hmm. And before I could really even articulate um, that I wanted to be a storyteller, uh, I just I felt that love and itch and desire for stories. And mm -hmm. um, I was particularly interested in, in narrative and long form, but, um, you know, didn't have any clue how to do it. So I wanted to practice yeah, uh, yeah. quite literally um, through music videos because um, I'm impulsive and I also wanted to practice on a very short um, amount of time, <laughs> um, literally on screen, yeah, <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense. I mean, that's pretty dope because, I mean, you know, you're, you're just hearing you talk about it. You don't hear too many people who are able to kind of chart their own path like that. Like you, you always hear the, 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 it's always the, and I know you, 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 in the past, you, you have a, uh, a working relationship with director X, things like that. You know, I hear people get, you know, interning and getting putting on things like that, but there's usually a pattern, you know what I mean? It's like you do a certain thing and then you get to this part. I mean, I guess, is it fair to say that you're definitely a lot more pointed in the decisions you're making for your career? I try to be, and I like to be, and I'd mm. like to think that I am. Um, I, you know, before reading Pea Valley, I was very much in search of stories that could um, subvert how women were um, specifically uh, represented before that moment. Um, that could be in music videos or, or just on the screen in the general sense. Um, and so in sort of, 
looking for that and asking for that when P Valley came across my desk, I, I felt like it was meant to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, Cal mentioned X, but did you have any other um I guess influences, especially in the in the path that charts from music video to narrative, because we were just talking about um you know, Joel Schumacher just passed and he, some of his early films, I remember critics describing them as like music video-esque in a really positive way. Like if you look at Lost Boys or Flatliners like that. My biggest influence um, is no doubt Melina Matsukas. There's no words to describe her. I was very, since I was young, inspired by Melina because um, not only did I heavily connect to her work, but when I um, understood who was behind that work, I saw myself um, and then realized that um, through that, um, I also had a voice and, and could tap into that voice. And um, so I'm very, very inspired by her work and, and by her path and, and her um, creativity and her vision. Her, her, her storytelling is just, it's really brilliant. And um, I think that you can see that influence in my work if I if I were if I'm honest (laughs) um and um but but I'm I'm also you know inspired by uh my peers as much as I am like uh, inspired by the people before me Mm -hmm. you know um I think there are so many incredible young uh filmmakers right now photographers directors, cinematographers, there's no way that you can't be inspired and, yeah. and grow in this time. Now, if we're talking the Molina path, though, when are we going to see the directed by Karina Evans feature film? Facts. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot tell you exactly when, but she's oh, yeah. working on it, folks. I, 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 <laughs> I, guess, I guess some, I hope that some of that consistent work you had going on in the last couple of months was towards whatever the, uh, the film will end up being. That's uh, that's my that, that's my hope anyway. My hope. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you you've also been doing a lot of acting though. I mean you know I, I there there was some talk around Firecrackers last year. You know I think I, it, it's funny to see that you you've had directing, but you also start to look as like the acting roles are also increasing as well. Um, what is it about you know a particular role? that has to grab you and say, I, I want to you know, take this person on in front of the camera? I mean, strangely enough, I think because I started acting and directing at the same time um, and started my quest to understand both of those uh, crafts at the same time, I think what I look for on both sides is quite similar um, mm-hmm. in that I'm looking for stories that I can truly offer my perspective and if I don't have a perspective I don't feel like I have any business being in that space of telling the story um but specifically I'm drawn to stories that um uh you know challenge um issues of ethical issues of our time or you know stories that um subvert a previously misconceived notion of a particular group of people or of women or black women or strippers you know, um, I'm interested in, in stories where I can see myself on screen. I can see people who look like me. I can see um, characters that um, haven't been uh, presented before. Um, I would say I'm most drawn to, and, I'm, and, I'm, and my goal is, is representing underrepresented communities. And we've talked to people too that said that, um, you know, we talked to actors, directors like uh, Jay Ellis, who directed for the first time on this recent season of Insecure, mm-hmm. and he was saying that having that proficiency in both really elevates your craft and yeah. separate aspect. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that I understood um, what my or found rather my process in directing through acting, um, mm-hmm. how to speak to actors. Um, by uh, living in the actor headspace, mm-hmm. um, how to not speak to actors <laughs> 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 because I, I didn't particularly like being spoken to in certain ways, so I avoid that. Um, but d- I think just um, the biggest uh, benefit is understanding story on a deeper level and, and being able to have respect for both 
um, the director role or the actor role by uh, reason of being in both of those spaces, it's, it's allowed for me to understand the best way to collaborate. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to Pea Valley for a second and just ask you, like, how important was it to you and Katori, I guess, uh, that this show start, at least start with a, a woman behind the lens? Like, I don't know if the plan is for women to direct the entire season, but mm -hmm. at least to set the table. It was very, very important to Vittori. I think, again, it's one of those things that happened in our very first conversation where we aligned not only on the story and the potential for how beautiful the story is, but we particularly aligned on the female gaze and that mm -hmm. this story need to be told through that lens. And um, even in sort of innately understanding that we had to figure out the words to articulate that to the rest of the crew. Mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, one's female gaze or my female gaze might be different than her female gaze and, and sort of what we um, continue to zero in on was just being able to root the camera and, and the story in her experience. Um, mm -hmm. And all elements drive back to that. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, avoiding objectifying, that's avoiding um, hypersexualizing, that's avoiding um, presenting these women in uh, gratuitous, um, false fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely got that sense from, you know, a lot of the dance scenes, even from movies and TV that have definitely been in the setting before, these felt like uh, much more, I guess, realer or grittier and true to life to what that setting really is. That's, that's Katori. Like she is, uh, she is the mastermind behind P Valley and, you know, through every conversation was so passionate about the authenticity of, of um, everything that need, needed to be communicated. And that was down to the, the, the costume, the clothes, the, the dialect, um, you know, everything that you see, she enforced there be authenticity in that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about the last scene, to, the last dancing that is um, with Mercedes when the uh, audio cuts out and you just hear her breathing. I think that really, really puts you in her perspective. And also, I don't know if that, this was the intent, but made me like really nervous. Or <laughs> well, I mean, I myself will never be able to do that. <laughs> I don't know about any of y'all on the call, but it, it, I think that's a, a really good example of um, the way that P Valley subverts the narrative of, of um, stripping or pole dancing or however you feel most comfortable um, describing what these women do. It's high art. It's a physical mm -hmm. demanding sport. Um, and um, shout out to the editor, Hymena, um, mm -hmm. that moment was to basically get audiences inside her head and, and mm -hmm. to feel what it would feel like to climb up to the top of the, the pole, you know, somehow get yourself upside down and drop head first to the floor. Yeah. And, and the power that um, you and she has in that moment over everyone in that room. Uh, where, where does that rank in terms of like some of the favorite moments or scenes you got to shoot for the, 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 the Pea Valley pilot? Um, that one was special because uh, Brandy, who plays Mercedes, had been training for weeks and weeks. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she has a background in dance, um, but had never done um, pole dancing before. And so to see her journey and her progression to be able to climb up on that pole and while we we did have um body doubles for the you know bigger moves like dropping head first to the ground <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but she put in so much work to be able to um carry most of that routine which is so helpful as a director in the edit um mm -hmm. and, and and for the producers to be able to um blend um and hide the use of a body double. <laughs> but so it was really, really special because I was so proud of Brandy and because she was like fully Mercedes in that moment. And mm -hmm. it was special to, to see her pour her heart into that. For people that are trying to get put on, especially, you know, 
the voices of people of color who don't feel like they're being heard. Um, what do you have any advice for how they can, you know, start to get on the path to doing what you do and aspiring to, you know, be able to put on the work that you put on um, in your career? A couple of things. I think the first thought that I have is really believe in yourself. And that sounds like, you know, a very cheesy sort of saying, but there will be a lot of people who will root against you and who might not want you to be um, in the position that you are not in. And you cannot let those people get in the way of your um, telling of the story. Just believe in yourself and focus on the story and, um, don't let those voices seep in um and uh which is which is a very challenging thing to do um from personal experience mm -hmm. um, so i'm i'm saying that to everyone else as much as i'm still saying it to myself yeah. um and then the second thing is to never stop learning and growing to never stop learning and growing if you like that conversation with karina Head over to Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts for the full interview. Thank you for listening to Watch Less.